Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This lesson is on piece number four out of my series called Seven Easy Classical Guitar Songs for Beginners. This series is an introduction to classical guitar by teaching actual pieces of music, very simple beginner level pieces, and by giving you step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on them from the ground up. To get the most out of this series, I encourage you to start from part one. There is a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos of everything in this series. So if you're wanting the thorough education on this, please start in part one. However, each video stands on its own as well if you already have a grasp on some of the basics of classical guitar. Each piece in this series features a different technique, training, and element of expression needed to bring the music alive, which you can then apply to any other piece of music. And I will also do a harmonic analysis in this video, and I do that in every piece in this series. If you're wanting an introduction to classical guitar with some easy, playable, and enjoyable pieces to walk away with, then you're in the right place. You can download the sheet music and the classical guitar tab for all the pieces in this series for free. They're inside my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get my arrangement pack for free. In this lesson, I'll teach you the fourth piece out of seven in this series, and we will talk about how to take advantage of vibrato to be more expressive in our playing. Let's get into it. I'm going to perform this piece for you so you hear a demonstration of what it sounds like. Then we'll talk about the sheet music a little bit, a couple bits of information I want you to know about the sheet music. Then we'll go into exercises for how to work on it from the ground up. We're going to do seven exercises to step by step work through how to get this piece down with the building blocks. And then we will talk about vibrato, just which you can add to any piece, but we're gonna talk about it in the context here to add a little bit of expression to any sustained notes. Then I'll give you a little bonus tip on how I approach working on a piece to find deeper expression in it instead of just playing the notes. And after that, we'll do a harmonic analysis. So we see what are the actual chords that this piece is following the melody is outlining chords or implying harmony in it we'll analyze what that harmony is and at the very end i'll do another demonstration of the piece slowly intended for you to play along with so you can work towards practicing along with my demonstration at the end of the video just a reminder you can get all the sheet music for free in this lesson and this whole series with my solo guitar arrangement pack click on the link in the top of the description to get that this piece is just titled dance by hans neusiedler and it is from the 1500s, so this is likely uh, originally a lute piece. And uh, titles of pieces of music uh, in all the eras of classical music often were just titled by the type of dance that they were. So like a jig or, uh, or like the form of the song, like a sonata form was called sonata number whatever. So instead of some you know, poetic name of a piece, it's called dance because it's a dance. And a lot of pieces are named based on the type of dance. So that's why you'll see so many uh, pieces of music just titled the type of form that it is and then the number that they did. So anyway, let's go into the performance of the piece. Here's a demonstration of it, and then we'll go into the rest. <laughs> Let's talk about the sheet music quickly. First of all, we have a key signature in this one, which we have not had in any of the pieces so far in this series. If there are any sharp or flat symbols here between the, tr the treble clef and the time signature, that's the key signature. Little tip about the key signature with sharps, no matter how many sharps, if you want to know the key, the final sharp is what I think of as pointing to the note that is the key. So the final sh sharp is one half step below the key. So this is on the note G, and one half step above that is A. So the line above that is A. So this is the key of A. So three sharps is the key of A. Also want to point out this C with a line through it. We learned early on in part one that C means common time, which means 4-4. Four, four. C with a line through it means cut time which means two, two. So which means there are two half notes in each measure. It looks just like four, four, and you could feel it like four, four, but it's meant to be felt as two beats. Boom, 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 boom. Dun, 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 dun. Instead of one, two, three, four, one. So that's the feel of cut time. 
And lastly, let's just take note again of the pickup measure, which we learned about in a previous video in this series. This is not a complete measure. It's just one note leading into the piece. So just taking note of that pickup measure there. And I think we're ready to work through the exercises for this piece. The first exercise I want to do is review the scale that the melody comes from. I've talked about this in other pieces in this series. I like to do this. It's not so common in classical lessons, but because I come from a jazz background and, and as an improviser, I like to take note of the collection of notes that the piece of music is is coming from. This is an A major scale. If you looked at what's the lowest note, okay, we have A, we have G sharp. G sharp is the lowest note. We go up and we have D and we have E and we have F sharp, okay? So F sharp is the highest note and G sharp is the lowest note and it's just an A major scale. So that's really helpful to know and I want you to play it up and down. I started on A, but then played that G sharp below. I'll do that again. One more time. Okay, so that's exercise one. You don't always have to do that. I just like to do that when it's relevant and when I'm recommending the exercises. You can always come up with your own side note. Probably one of the best things to do ever is to consider for yourself what your own stepping stones should be. How can I break this down? How can I learn the building blocks from this? How can I get this going from the ground up? How can I uh, kind of deconstruct this and then build it back up to have the fundamentals down that are needed to play this piece as opposed to just barreling into the beginning, struggling with it, feeling tension, missing things, getting bad habits, etc. So you don't have to do exactly what I tell you, but I hope the methodology of me breaking things down into step-by-step -step approaches, as I always do on this channel, is uh, a conditioning for you to start to do that for yourself and discover and invent your own exercises because you know best what's missing, what is needed, is there something lacking, is there an issue with a certain technique, then you invent the way to solve that problem. Uh, exercise number two, is let's play just the melody of the A section. Playing just the melody is always a good idea. The thinking is, if you can't play the melody by itself nicely or how you like it or accurately, how are you gonna do it with more going on? Plus it's excellent for our ears and our exposure to the piece of music to separate the different voices. The bass line is a different instrument. It's a different voice. The melody is its own line, its own voice. And we want to have those feel independent in our playing. So it's not just one big wash of sound. So I would do that. And as I always recommend, do try to make sure as you're going through steps, if you're taking it seriously, if you want to get anything down, really actually down, ready to perform or record or just feel great about in your own playing, do it a number of times correct. Three is a perfectly good number. If you try to play that three times in a row correctly, you'll mess up so many times and you'll become aware of where the actual issues are. Whereas if we don't give ourselves that, I actually have to get through this and play it correctly multiple times, we, we tend to ignore where the actual issues are. We just don't even realize we're not improving anymore. So if you try to get it three times in a row, it might take a long time to do that but you'll have played it so many times correctly because you'll get it once and then mess up. You'll get it twice, you'll mess up. And you'll do that a bunch and then eventually you'll finally get three. So you'll have done it correctly so many times, more than three, even though you got three in a row. Okay, so the next thing I want us to do is just play the melody of the B section. So after that repeat sign there, this being the repeat sign. So we go back to the beginning there and then we come through. So B section here, and that's gonna be the last two lines of music there. I can't tell you how helpful that is for me to separate things. In the past when I played guitar before I got used to separating them, hearing them separately, really worked on it. I would hear like this right here, this bass note. So if I went da do 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 and then do, do, do. in my mind I'm kind of feeling that and hearing that as part of connecting to the melody, even though it's this way lower note and it's obviously not. Um, I wasn't really hearing it as an independent voice. I was just hearing it as part of what happens to the melody and kind of feeling it that way. By hearing it independently, by practicing each part like I 
talked about here, um, the way I interpret it in my actual playing becomes so much more musical, so much more um, expressive and delicate, and everything that I want it to be instead of just big one big kind of block of sound. So playing the B section independently, and then you can piece those together if you want. Let's review the bass notes for the next exercise. You don't really have to play through all of it, you can also, but I like to at least review them. We'll go ahead and, and play it fast. So boom, 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 boom. Repeat it. Moving on. Boom, boom. Okay, let's go back to that. Boom, boom, boom. So since I'm doing it in time, oh, there's a kind of a quick one that goes in there, and I'm going very fast, but doom 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 doom. That's helpful here. Wow, how simple that is. Obviously, these are simple pieces, but it's nice to review what those bass notes are. Um, let's go on to exercise five, and this is just the A section altogether. So pretty simple stuff. Sometimes my exercises are less obvious than this, but when in doubt, just start breaking down either parts, voices, independent lines, and playing them separately, then adding them together, or if in doubt, at the very least, start piecing together measures at a time, two, then the other two, then connect together. We're gonna do that in a piece coming up in this series where we're gonna start it from the very end and do it, uh, which is a tried and true strategy that I learned about from a David Russell masterclass that I went to. Um, and it's not like he invented it or anything, but he demonstrated that when teaching someone. Um, and it was really inspiring and I've done it a lot since then. So we'll talk about that soon. Let's go ahead and piece together the A section all at once. <laughs> play that much. Now I am muting the bass notes, the ringing notes with the bass muting technique that I talked about earlier in this series. I think it might have been in the previous lesson, uh, which is really challenging. So measure one, measure two, and then I hop over to D. It's very subtle, you know, when once you have it down, but but it's really tricky. I'm hopping my thumb over as I've talked about before. You don't have to do that. So what my advice is to you is to listen to it really carefully and decide if the ringing bass notes are annoying, basically, and let your taste take care of it. Because if you don't like the sound of it and you notice, That's with everything ringing together. If you like, that has a certain feel to it that can feel okay as well. It's not terribly dissonant or anything like that. Um, so if you think it sounds washy and not clean and it kind of bothers you, great. Then you're gonna have an easier time getting it muted because when you mute it, you're gonna say, ooh, that sounds nice. And that's an important factor in our practicing to reinforce the stuff that we actually want to improve upon. If it doesn't bother you to have the notes ringing together, if you don't even hear the difference or something, then it's okay for now to just not worry about that and just enjoy it and just say, I like the sound, but do have it be a conscious choice. You know about this technique now and you can work on it later if you want to. But this simple, simple piece is much more difficult when trying to mute the bass notes. So please do it if only if you feel the need to or want to, and otherwise you can ignore it. Let's do the B section together. The next exercise is to do that. I'll do it with the bass notes ringing. So much easier to do it that way. And it doesn't sound that bad. It's kind of has a nice, it fills up the sound a little bit, maybe even in a nice way. And it possibly could sound a little thin. have the bass notes cut off in the way that I was doing it before. So it's really a matter of taste. You're the artist. You can do it however you want. So the next quote unquote exercise is just doing the whole thing. And when you're doing the whole thing, of course, break it down into measures at a time if you need to. And if you just want to work that way as default. So just piece together the whole thing now. And you've worked on at least a few independent elements to, uh, to piece it together. Even if you're not sure what elements those should be in future pieces. It's an excellent exercise to just think, oh, can I do a little bit of just the melody, a little bit of just the bass, a little bit of just this section, a little bit of that. Um, now I'm ready to try the whole thing. 
okay? If it's something at your level that you can dive right into, then you're fine. But we're talking about when you need to, when you need to work on something. Let's talk about our element of expression for this piece, which is vibrato. Vibrato is an important thing to talk about. This is not the best piece to feature it on, but uh, it's just where I decided to talk about it in the series. Uh, for any note that is sustaining, if we move our left hand just a little bit like this, the tiniest bit, you might feel like you don't even hear it, but I'll do an exaggerated version of it. It's like a wobble sound if I do that. But you don't really want to hear it like that, but the tiniest subtle, subtlest amount breathes a little life into it. Okay, this is an important lesson for working on if you have especially other pieces where the melody is really ringing out and sustaining. Okay, but practice it on anything where you're holding a note like these half notes here, a little bit of vibrato. If you watch any professional guitar player, you'll see them play, and when they're sitting on a note, they don't just sit there. It's not just a dead note. They're moving slightly all the time on sustained notes. And so we're not moving when we're playing faster scales or faster moving lines, but as soon as you land on a note, this is going on pretty much with every guitar player. So something to start watching for when you're watching guitar players and give that a try with your technique um, on this piece or on any other piece. So here's my little side tip here. It's a little bit conceptual, but a piece like this, out of all the ones that I have in this series, this is my least favorite. And so if I'm uninspired by a piece, and certainly you can say, I just don't like this, I don't want to play it, that's fine. But there's actually a lot of room to explore. What am I missing? You know, where is the poetry in this? Where is the artistry in this? And how can I play it in a way where I shine some light on and access the beauty that's in here that I'm not feeling yet? And with this piece, I was able to do that. I was able to get it to a place where... I enjoyed it so much more by just persevering through, instead of just saying, I don't like this one. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just not, I'm, you know, let me get a little more comfortable with muting those bass notes and let me just make it feel a little more easy and natural by getting it down a little better. Now let me play with dynamics. Now let me play with uh, a little bit of timbre change, which we're going to talk about soon in later in this series. Um, and let me just listen for, is there something that I'm missing here? And sure enough, it unlocked for me, and I really began to appreciate exactly what the piece is. So that's just my advice to you, to not judge the piece of music. I think it's wise to assume it's on us to access the beauty that is there. And if you're really just like, I don't like this, well, instead of saying that something's wrong with the piece that I'm playing, say like, what can I do? to improve my own interpretation of it and find the joy in this piece of music, I think we'll, we'll gain, even if in the long run you don't want to play the piece of music, we'll gain so much more by assuming we have something we can access that, is, that we haven't touched on yet, and it'll improve our playing immensely. Otherwise, we're just going to flip around between all kinds of things and give up on them quickly because we think, I don't like this one, I don't like this one, when really we just haven't given it enough work to unlock what's available to us in our own playing on it. And so that'll take us a little bit to the next level. Let's do an analysis on this piece. First, let's just acknowledge the form. I called this the A section, and this is the B section. So we'll say A, A, B, because this is the same thing as here. So we'll say B, B, but the end is different. So the end goes So it's B B, but we would call that B prime, which means B with a little apostrophe. So A A B B prime. The prime, the little apostrophe next to B means that it ends slightly differently. So that's useful because it's not completely different, but it is a tiny bit different at the very end. So that's our form analysis. Quickly, the harmonic analysis here is that this is a D chord, but it's in the key of A. So we can say, okay, this is D, this is an A chord, this is an E chord, and back to A. This is the four chord of the key. This is the one chord of the key, the five chord of the key, and the one chord of the key, okay? This is D again, and D still, so do, 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 do. And really, you can just guess from seeing the roots down here, okay, D, okay, and then this is an A, chord and it's because you might be like what is that if you weren't looking at the a there what's going on there with this is the it e it's a and a so d d 
A A D D A A. It doesn't even resolve in a way that it typically would, like putting an E or E7 before the A here, which is one thing I don't like about this piece. I think that would be kind of nice harmonically. The rest of it I, I do like. Uh, so that is the harmonic analysis of this piece. I'll do the slow demonstration that you can practice along with in one sec. If you haven't got the sheet music yet, you can download it for free at soundguitarlessons.com slash moon or use the link in the top of the description to get my solo guitar arrangement pack, which is a pack of a bunch of sheet music, some of it quite difficult, some of it easier. And all of the pieces from this classical series are in there, so you can get that for free. And let's move on to the practice along demonstration. I'll play this nice and slowly so you can work towards playing along with it. So here's our slow demonstration for you to play along with. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, boom. And right after the four, on the and of four, we're gonna come in together on that E note and then come in with the piece. So it'll sound like this, one, two, and three, four. That's it for this lesson. I post a new lesson every week. I hope to see you in another lesson soon. I hope to see you in more of the lessons that are in this classical series. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.